Praise the Lord. That is very interesting. I, I know we have read the book of uh, First Samuel and especially the story of uh, Eli. And we have just thought about him alone. Maybe him and his sons. But something that we pick from the scripture we have read is that from the forefathers, God had picked this uh, family lineage actually for them to become what? Priests. Hallelujah. We do not see God blame the father and the forefathers of Eli for not playing their priestly roles properly. But that happens with Eli. And God has an issue with Eli. Why? Because Eli got to that point where he began to elevate his sons. Rather to prioritize the sons. Hey, hallelujah. To prioritize the sons more than God. And he would pick the choicest of the offerings that the people of God brought to the church to fatten himself and fatten the sons. If you are a Bible scholar, you know that by the time he died, the Bible says he fell from the seat and he died because he was a huge man. He had been fattening himself together with the sons with the choicest of what? Of the offerings that the people of God brought. And you know those days people would bring even, uh, you know, food, uh, you know, uh, whether it is uh, in grains or whether it is uh, animals like goats, sheep and chicken or whatever it was. Now church, look here. Um, I, I trust that God will teach us from what we would call a bad example for us to learn how it looks like for us to practice or rather to embrace a godly fatherhood. The Bible says in that scripture I quoted, Proverbs 22, 6, that we should train up a child in the way he should go and when he grows old, he's not going to depart from such a way. Amen. Eli, coming from a priestly, uh, a, a, a priestly lineage, got to a point and he forgot the ways of the Lord. He got to a point and he became very permissive. Very permissive to a point that he allowed his sons to run the show. The sons would actually sleep with the women who were attending to the temple. And they, was, they would also enjoy the, 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 the choicest of offerings as we had seen before. Be an authoritative parent. In other words, a parent who has authority. A parent who is able to guide. And when you see them demanding for something that is not right, you are able to say no. This is not okay. Because you know it's going to hurt them. Praise the Lord. You have authority, but authority to guide, not to hurt. Are we following? Hallelujah. Godly fatherhood. Godly fatherhood means that you will see dangers that your child can get into and that you will help them early in life not to grow the appetite towards that direction. Today we have a number of young people killing each other in the universities when a girl says no to their friendship because the fathers in the house have never told their sons that no is also an answer to a question or a request. So many of our young people do not take no for an answer. And I can tell you it is because they have never known that no as an answer from their fathers. Today, mothers in the house, you know very well. Sometimes you tell your child no, but they go ahead to do it. But the moment you say, okay, I told you not to do that and you went ahead to do it, fine, your father will be coming. My friend, they begin to plead. 
please mom usiambe daddy please mom baba hata yuko karibu so the father has a bigger role in parenting hallelujah especially where you want firmness character formation spiritual formation the father plays a big role and therefore you cannot be a father who is not present in the lives of your children we we you know somebody somebody has remarked that the curse of fatherhood is distance think about that somebody has said that the curse of fatherhood is what distance because a father will be away working to make sure these kids go to school they pay you know he pays school fees buys food there is a roof over over their head and while he's away like that then something else is not happening the kids do not sometimes get that firm grip and that is why we must be intentional to them are you getting it getting married means taking responsibility you will have to raise those kids make sure they have a house and make sure they go to school praise the lord Amen. without necessarily embarrassing any father i am not sure how many of us remember the the dates of birth of their kids if you were to turn to one i'm not sure whether they remember when their child was born and that is why when a father takes a child to school or to the hospital and the doctor asks when was she born mzee ndio huyo kwa simu hello mama huyu alizaliwa lini because we are never interested there are things we think this belongs to the, the mothers and that should not be the case hallelujah do you know how special it is for your child to know you actually remember their birthday maybe they have not even reminded you and you behave like you are not aware but when you manage to find time you are able to buy them a gift and to just come home to say happy birthday You mean daddy remembers my birthday? It has lasting impact. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, fathers in the house, I know you are born again. But fathers who beat their wives. This is what you are teaching your daughters. That when they get married, they actually should accept to be beaten by that man every other time and they should not tell you their parent they should not raise that concern anywhere because you have told them that mothers had to be beaten any time you can slap them you can insult them any other time And so we get cases of uh young girls or young mothers suffering in marriage to a point that at some day they even die they lose their lives. And you begin to ask but kwanini hakusema why didn't she tell us? And then you know what fathers will do they turn to their wives you did not raise your daughter well you ought to have taught her how to to speak to us whenever there is a problem. Hallelujah. Kids don't pick what you say. They pick what they see. So, the best school you can take your kids is how you relate with their mother in that house. Don't speak much. Relate and show much of what you expect them to do. Praise the Lord. godly parenting godly parenting today there are so many young people young women who have said they cannot get married if marriage is what i have seen with dad and mom i've had enough and they choose to 
chase after career and they don't care whether you want some grandchildren or not. That's none of their business because they are not ready to become a punching bag to somebody. Hey, hallelujah. I pray that today we're going to change that fathers today you get home and there is going to be warmth. Amen. There is going to be warmth. If you do not love your family and the way the world is so hostile, where else are they going to learn about love? The world is so hostile. At the place of work, there is somebody who wants you sacked. At the place of work, there is somebody who wants you demoted. Somebody who wants to be in trouble, wants you to be in trouble. It is right from the home where we should express love to each other. Hallelujah. And that the father should lead in expressing and demonstrating this love. Praise the Lord. The curse of fatherhood is distance. Some fathers are not physically away. They are actually physically present in that home, in that house. But what do they do? They get to the house, go remove their, their ties, their coat, and uh, their shoes, and then come to the sitting room, and they grab the what? The remote. And so, they are waiting for, this, for supper to be ready, but they are actually on the screen. So, what do the kids do? Either they choose to play or they join the father in watching the news and you know nobody is talking to each other. There is no relationship. You are interacting with the pictures on the screen, not with the father on the seat. And we are thinking it is a good, nice way of spending the evening before we sleep. And you encourage yourself that after all, after the meals, we pray together. Emotional distance is more dangerous than, spirit, than physical distance. Did you hear that? Emotional distance is more dangerous than physical distance. There is a father who walks away, but he talks to his kids every single day. Now that father is making a lot of mileage in terms of building a strong bond with the kids than the father who is physically present but busy on the screen. Hallelujah. Najua Kitambo, men used to work in the town, in the city. Bishop, hizo enzizenu. Weo lisaidiwa na mungu. Men would work in the city and so what they would do is leave their wives in the village. So they visit there occasionally. And so sometimes a man comes home and asks, Now you want to nani? Now you mungini? Those are his kids. Can you imagine? Because him, he went, planted the seed, and left. You see, you have to accept times have changed. And you have to accept that the mistakes that were done by your fathers or your forefathers should not be repeated. We cannot have generations suffering after generation. Remember what you have read. This was a mistake that was committed by Eli. His fathers had been given the priesthood by God. But for him, he begins now to misbehave. And what happens? He dies together with his sons. So painful. So sad. That he cannot leave behind sons to continue with the lineage because he failed as a father to raise them in the ways of the Lord. 
One time we were, we lived in uh, Kariobangi South End. In that plot, there was a couple that would fight literally every day. I don't know where they got jembes from. At least a panga, you can understand, probably it was a we weapon. Even mattocks, they had. So that, those are the things they would pick whenever they wanted to, to hit each other. So that's how we got to know about them. The mattocks and the jembes in the house. Because when you get out to go separate them, you find the wife with the mattock and then the husband with a jembe. So, Nairobi, you don't need it. So, the kids in that house, them they would actually wake up and they are there. And then as time went by, the bigger ones began to, to support the mother. And one night I remember that man was badly hit behind here. In fact, I almost told my wife, no, let's go, not go there. Because now, if he's dead, you don't want to become part to that. Because you are going to actually record a statement with the police. He was bleeding profusely. Now, you tell me, what kind of example kids raised in such an environment would have? The word love is so strange to those kids. And that is why when now they, they grow up to a level where they have an opportunity or, you know, an option to live independently, when they hear love for the first time, they get confused and they do not know how to define true love. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So may God help us that we are going to choose. This, is, this was my experience with my father. And you could be saying, this is how I experienced it. I never like it. I don't even know what it is about father's love. But because of God our father, you can choose to demonstrate that love to your family, to the people around you, and that you actually can contribute to making a better society. Praise the Lord. Hey. When you read the book, the same book of uh, First Samuel, now reading chapter 1, we were reading chapter 2. If you go back to chapter 1, you actually find this lady by the name Hannah, who was barren, and later God blessed her with five kids. But you actually find her leading her children, starting with Samuel, to the temple. Samuel, him, he went there to serve. And so there was a mother present to actually support and to show the kids the right way, even serving the Lord. When you read about Ellie, you don't seem to get anywhere the wife is featuring. Mothers in the house, there is something for you in parenting. Do not just sit and watch when things are going wrong. Because when your husband will be crying, both of you in your old age will help each other to cry. I talked about an authoritarian parent authoritative, and then there is now the permissive parent. Permissive parent who does not care what the kids want to do. They are free to do it. They are free to do it. He, he, he doesn't care. And interestingly in this life, I have come to realize, hardly do you find couples who both of them are the same. And so, you need to know, mothers in the house, if your husband is a permissive father, please take care of your kids. Because you will be part of the choir that will be crying in your old age. Make sure that you actually take that firm grip on your kids. For the sake of their future and for your own sake. Praise the Lord. 
And you fathers, if you notice your wife is the permissive one, be firm to help your kids for the sake of their future and your future as well. Hallelujah. Yes. Because where we have a problem is that you find one parent is permissive, the other one is authoritative. Honoring God, or rather honoring the sons more than God, or above God as the Bible uh, puts it, shows that Eli did not actually prioritize God. So, for you as a parent, put God first in your life. You can quote First Samuel chapter 2 verse 27 to 29. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 27 to 29. Put God first in your life. As a father, if you put God first in your life, you will have the wisdom and the grace to raise and nurture your children in the ways of the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can never give what you do not have. You cannot teach your kids the ways of the Lord if you have not personally walked in the way of the Lord. Point number two. Uh, point number two I was saying. Discipline your children. Discipline your children. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 11 to 14. And I want to read. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 11 to 14. The point is discipline your children. Let's see what the Bible says. The Lord told Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel, at which both ears of all who hear, who hear it, shall tingle. On that day, I will perform against Eli, all that I have spoken concerning his house from the beginning to the end. And I now announce to him that I will judge and punish his house forever for every or for the iniquity of which he knew. For his sons were blaspheming God, bringing curse upon themselves and he did not restrain them. A permissive parent. He did not restrain them. Therefore, I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for or purged with sacrifice or offering forever. In other words, there was no repentance that God would take not to punish the house of Eli. So we have said number two, Discipline your children. Number three, teach them about Jesus. Number three, teach them about Jesus. Teach them about Jesus. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 22 to 25. That is where we had read. Oh, sorry, no, that's a bit earlier. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 22 to 25. The Bible says this. Uh, now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did to all Israel and how they lay with the women who served at the door of the tent of meeting. And he said to them, why do you, why do, you do such things? For I hear your evil dealings from all the people. No, my sons, it is no good. It is no good report which I hear the Lord's people spreading abroad. If one, if one man wrongs another, another, God will mediate for him. But if a man wrongs the Lord, who shall intercede for him? Yet they did not listen to their father, for it was the Lord's will to slay them. For it was the Lord's will to slay them. So, teach them about Jesus. The last point number four, the last point number four says, the earlier you start, the better. The earlier you start, the better. 
And that is taken from the same book, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 25. What does verse 25 say? If, actually it is part B, but allow me read the entire verse. If one man wrongs another, God will mediate for him. But if a man wrongs the Lord, who shall intercede for him? Yet they did not listen to their father. That is actually where we get that from. That's why I'm saying the earlier you start, the better. Get somebody sit you down to tell you how you have failed. Praise the Lord. And so don't you wait. There is an, a certain age which is beyond repair. How should your daughter dress? Don't you wait to tell her when she's a young lady. Let her know when she's young. How should your son relate with girls around the estate and in school? Should he be punching them and kicking them? No. Teach them the manners of respecting girls. When they grow up, they will respect women if they respected girls. Hallelujah. Is it still Happy Father's Day? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we say Father is destiny. Father is destiny. The presence of a father in a child's life plays such a, a big role, pivotal role in the life of that person. Psychologists argue a bit and they say, it is even better for a child to, to lack or lose the mother than the what? The father. Let's not go that direction. But I'm just trying to show you how critical the father's presence is in a child's life. So if you work so hard, get so tired that you get home and you only want to eat and sleep, and you never stop to ask your son, your daughter, how was school today? Did you play today? Oh, did you fall? So what happened? Why this scratch? If you never find time for that, you are missing something in parenting. Because while that small scratch is nothing to you, it is all everything your daughter and your son have in the world. Because them, they are not looking for anybody's school fees. They are not bothered to pay rent. They are not bothered to feed anyone. So that small scratch, a scratch they got when they were playing means a lot. In fact, it's all they have that day. So you actually need to stop to say, oh, sorry. You, so you actually hurt yourself. Fine, but you'll be okay. It happens like that. It is what they value at that time. It may not be valuable to you, but to them, it means a lot. Praise the Lord. That girl, that boy who told your son at school that they have a long nose and now they are feeling like they don't look like any other person. And you, you don't think it is important. Where Peter, my friend, wait a minute. It is important to them. It is important to them. In fact, you need to tell them that, that they resemble you. In fact, the first thing is, how about mine? How does it look? It looks okay. So you, you see, you're my child. Yours resembles mine. And as you continue to grow, it will just look exactly like mine, which is okay. So you are fine. In fact, that other one did not see you well. They don't know what they were saying. And so your son, your daughter will go to sleep at peace. Praise the Lord. And they will go out there thinking and knowing that they have a great father. They have a great father. He, this father told them that whatever people say out there about you does not matter. What matters is what I say about you. And for you, I know you are, you are beautiful. You are handsome. You are well built. Praise the Lord. Those words of affirmation. Those words of affirmation. Some men today are being beaten in their homes because when they grew up, they were intimidated. Some of them by their fathers, others by their own mothers. And so they can be slapped and they do not want to tell anyone and they just keep quiet. And they have no self-esteem. So, 
people will be saying baba yao anakuanga amenyamaza sana sometimes si kunyamaza <laughs> oh my goodness huh? now church i want us to just bring this to a close but it's important for us to also see how our heavenly father would want to relate with us and so to just get a recap of that i want us to read um, the book of second corinthians chapter 6 second corinthians chapter 6 i want us to read from i just want to read from verse 14 the bible says um, do not be unequally yoked up with unbelievers do not make mismated alliances with them or come under a different yoke with them inconsistent with your faith for what partnership have right living and right standing with god with iniquity and lawlessness or how can light fellowship with darkness verse 15 what harmony can there be between christ and belial the devil or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever what agreement can there be between a temple of god and idols for we are the temple of the living god even as god said i will dwell in and with and among them and will walk in and with and among them and i will be their god and they shall be my people verse 17 so come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them says the lord and touch not any unclean thing then i will receive you kindly and treat you with favor verse 18 the final one the bible says and i will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and the daughters says the lord almighty praise the lord so we have god our heavenly father who has a relationship with us or we have a relationship with and what is this that he expects from us his children and uh, i have just picked uh, five points and i just want to share that with us as we close and the first point which i have uh, picked from verse 14 is that god desires fellowship fellowship that we have a fellowship with him remember i have severally quoted that the curse of fatherhood is distance God desires that we have fellowship with him. When we engage in this fellowship with the Lord, we are not going to feel that he is far away from us. We are going to experience his love, his warmth around us and near us every hour. fellowship. Uh verse 15, the point of I've picked from verse 15 is that God requires or desires that we have spiritual harmony with him spiritual harmony meaning that your spirit is in right standing with the spirit of god what the spirit of god approves as the right thing for you as a believer is actually how you are living is what you are doing praise the lord so the first point what our heavenly father expects of us i have said the first one is what fellowship the second one is spiritual harmony and i have explained what that means spiritual harmony point number 3 is true worship true worship because you cannot worship belial or satan and at the same time worship god so god desires that we have what true worship that brethren when we live here today The way you are going to live tomorrow Monday all the way until we come back here is going to be a life of worship is going to be a, a true lifestyle of a believer somebody who knows God somebody who fears and honors God true worship that is from 
verse 16. Verse 17, verse 17, where the Bible is saying, be ye separate or be ye set apart. God desires commitment. Commitment. Praise the Lord. Commitment will help you such that even when you walk, when you live with people who do not uh, honor God, you have a commitment to live a godly life. Remember, we are talking about what? Godly fatherhood. You have a commitment to live a godly life in order to honor God. And finally, verse 18, where the Bible now the Lord says, you know, it says, and you realize now, this is actually connecting the other verses we have read from verse 14. He says, and I will become a what? A father to you. I will be a father to you and you are going to be my what? My sons and daughters. So, and connecting the others. So, after you have established, you have this fellowship with God. You have spiritual harmony. After you have, you, you have true worship, commitment, then what God expects or rather what he looks as the end results, what he looks at is that you're going to become a complete family. Complete family. You, he's going to become our father. And we are going to become his sons and the daughters. A complete what? Family. A complete family. Hallelujah. True fatherhood. True fatherhood. Hallelujah. And so, if I may just do a recap. From early, we have learned point number one, put God first in your life as a father or as a parent. Point number two, discipline your children. Number three, teach them about Jesus. And number four, the earlier you start, the better. Because the earlier they are easy to be uh, molded for that character formation. And then uh, the last points, our recap in terms of how the Lord expects us to relate with him is that he expects us to have a fellowship with him, to have spiritual harmony, uh, true worship, commitment, and a complete family. Complete family. Happy Father's Day, and may the Lord bless each one of us. And that may we all borrow from the word of God what he has spoken to us today for us to grow and nurture strong families. Hallelujah. May we be upstanding.